Having trouble winning games in college football 25? Whether you're struggling to pass on offense, or struggling to stop anybody on defense, <laughs> this is the video for you, as the solution could be something as simple as making a change in your game settings. So if you want to see five changes you can make in your gameplay settings to be instantly better at College Football 25, stick around after the intro. If you guys are looking for fast, cheap, reliable coins for your College Football 25 team, check out my coin sponsors at MMOXP and use discount code MONEYSHOT for 5% off your order. Link in the description below. The champ is here! Welcome back, Money Team. In today's video, I'm going to go over six settings that you could change to have better offense, defense, and special teams in College Football 25. But before I do, if you guys are enjoying the content and want to see more, or you just want to help this video get out to more subscribers, please make sure to hit the like button and let me know in the comment section. And if you need more help, you can download any of my ebooks instantly simply by clicking the links in the description or the top pin comment to get to your gameplay settings in college football 25 go to the home screen and tab over to game settings and it'll bring you right to the screen that we're going to spend most of our time and i essentially set all this to default for this video so if you've never been in here this is exactly what your default settings will look like and i'm going to spend most of my time on this tab right here starting off with the kicking control scheme. If you're having trouble with the new tap and hold kicking system and you're more comfortable with the old style that's been in Madden for the last 10 years, you can switch that over here and go to the tap and tap system, which in my opinion is much easier. But I'm not just gonna tell you guys what I think is the best. I'm also gonna put these through a series of experiments so we can find out which one works better with an actual statistical value behind it. So let's go ahead and let's go back to tap and hold and let's go ahead and let's do a uh, kicking mini game. So I got bronze on my first attempt with the new kicking system. I was only 100 points off from silver, so not a bad first attempt. But I'm definitely more used to the tap and tap system. So let's go ahead and let's try that again and see if we can get a higher score. And I'm definitely not surprised with the results when it comes to kicking. It definitely felt more accurate. It definitely felt like I had more control. And maybe it's just because I'm used to it. But the new kicking system is, is a downgrade in my opinion. Uh, I really think that tap and tap is the way to go as we break our record and we get silver on the very first attempt. Now, one of the most important ones is definitely your passing type. If you're having trouble with accuracy or you're having trouble with throwing the football, the new revamp passing system might not be the best way to go. I know I do find this is a little bit easier, so if you're new to the game or you haven't played a game in a long time, you haven't played Madden or you haven't played uh, since the last college football, I think revamp passing is a perfect system. Or you could even go down a step to classic passing, but they're both very similar. Revamp passing is essentially classic passing. It just has a meter that shows you how powerful you're throwing the ball, so you have a little more control and they also say that it does something with the target and the arc of the ball too i already made a full video about passing types i'll have a link in the description as well as on screen at the end of the video if you guys want to check that out but in that video i recommend switching this over from revamp passing to placement or placement and accuracy so let's go ahead and let's try this out first now for this one here i'm going to give myself a really difficult test with the passing skeleton out man which means there's more defenders on the field than i have receivers so my feedback from the mini game when it comes to revamp passing is it really felt really easy to do i mean i know i didn't even get bronze because it's a very difficult um you know to do the outmanned uh passing skeleton but without a doubt it was um it just felt really easy i completed just about every pass it felt like i think i might have threw one interception and i only really had like two or three incompletions in the to in total in the entire minute so now i'm going to go ahead i'm going to switch it to placement and accuracy which is the one that i typically use in game and i'm going to find out which one i get a higher score with so after using the uh, passing style that I'm a little bit more used to, it turned out that the score was too close to call. So I decided to repeat the test. So I repeated the test first using placement and accuracy and my score did go down. But the one thing that I noticed from the two separate practice attempts is that I didn't throw a single interception one time with placement and accuracy based on the fact that I had more control over where I put the ball. For my second attempt at revamp passing, the score went down, making the average between the two games lower. And even though I got the highest score with the revamp passing, I also noticed that I threw the most interceptions. As this system really felt boom or bust based on the fact that I didn't have as much control over where the ball was placed every single time that I threw it. So if you're having trouble passing and you want to learn the new system, switch over from revamp passing to placement and accuracy. Next up, the majority of the things I'm going to go over in this video are all on the defensive side of the ball, which is probably the area that people struggle with the most. Starting off with defensive ball 
Hawk. This is the only one that is set to on by default, and it's the only one that I actually agree with should always be on. And that is because it says user control defenders will auto move into position to play a catch when executing the catch mechanic while the ball is in the air. It says warning, disabling this mechanic may cause user defenders to attack the ball in the air less aggressively. Now, neither one of those I necessarily want to disable. I definitely want my DBs to more, be more aggressive, and I definitely want them to try to get into a position to intercept the ball. So there's no real down, there's no real upside to turning that off. But the two most interesting ones are going to be defensive heat seeker assist. These don't come with warnings, but they take away a lot of control from the user, which can be a good thing if you're a less experienced player. But if you're a more experienced player, I would lean towards having this and defensive switch assist off. But at the same time, we're going to try them out in a mini game once again to see if we get any advantage from them, starting with defensive heat seeker assist. For this, we're simply going to do chase and tackle and see which one we can get a higher score on. To give you guys some feedback on this, when I started the drill, I felt fast and explosive to the edge to the point where I knocked the running back backwards on like the first six carries. The drill starts at the 30 yard line, but I got him all the way back behind the 40 before he ran an inside run and I got stuck on one of the tackle dummies, allowing him to go to the house for a touchdown. And I also noticed that I whiffed a couple of times. So there was definitely room for improvement, but I definitely also had a very good score. So let's see if putting defensive heat seeker assist on can help. We're also going to try to mess with the Heat Seeker window size, starting off with 100%. So for my first full game with Heat Seeker Assist on, I definitely felt the difference as far as feeling slower and less explosive, but it also felt more consistent, as even when I did miss on tackles, I missed by a much smaller margin. And towards the end of it, I even had a goal line stance where I even tackled the running back through one of the tackle dummies, which was very interesting considering that, once again, I don't think I would have got that animation without Heat Seeker Assist turned on. So for my first game with Heat Seeker Assist on, I got a new high score. It definitely felt different. I felt slower, but I also felt a little bit more consistent. But I definitely felt the difference as far as, it felt like I was on rails a little bit. Like you could feel the magnetism of the, uh, the linebacker just kind of being pulled in different directions which I didn't necessarily feel when I had Heat Seeker Assist turned off. So I definitely felt less freedom. But let's go ahead and let's move this window size up all the way to the top at 200%. And I definitely felt the difference with that set to 200% as I got my highest score by far of 52,000. And I was also getting some crazy animations. I couldn't help but notice while using this that a lot of times I would take a bad step or a bad angle, but if I was close enough to the running back, it would auto correct that and essentially just put me back on the running back and make an easy tackle. I even got a ridiculous animation where I tackled the running back through alignment even further away as I was using the trick of tapping the A or X button, whether an Xbox or PlayStation, throughout the entire drill to make save tackles and it was constantly suctioning me in one time even going as far as me catching the running back from behind which you typically don't even do in this game so this is definitely a cheat code i would definitely recommend if you're having trouble tackling which a lot of people are to try putting this on and setting it to its max of 200 percent to see if you have much more chances and much more luck of tackling people from all different angles front back sideways you name it next up we're going to try defensive switch assist which is something that i usually recommend having off but based off of the results of the last experiment that I did, this will be very interesting. So let's go ahead and let's start with off. And we're gonna go with coverage skeleton understaffed. I guess I'll be using these, uh, these, these uh, defensive backs. As you can see there, we're gonna go based off of what we get. Um, although I see it beginning a lot of cover two so far. And that was pretty easy with defensive switch assist off as I got gold and it, I really don't remember the computer completing too many passes. Uh, I think they did score a touchdown one time, but for the most part, it was all knockouts, got a couple interceptions, definitely felt pretty easy with defensive switch assist off. But let's see what happens if we put defensive switch assist on. Well, there was a definite difference here as the score was much lower and I felt like I was making much less plays myself. The computer every once in a while would make some plays as the computer got a few interceptions, but obviously this is all based off of where you are on the fence. If you feel like you're not very good in coverage and you want the computer to make more plays, I would say turn it on. But if you're a competent defensive player and you like to use your things, uh, make interceptions and make plays yourself, I would definitely leave this off. So to recap, these are all based off of you personally as a player. Uh, I'm going to go with tap and tap though. I'm used to that for Madden placement and accuracy I find is better because it just gives me more control over where the ball is going. Uh, when it comes to defense though, these are very up to who you are as a player. I say ball hawk, you definitely want to leave that on. Heat seeker assist, I could go on or off. My second highest score was with this off 
and I definitely felt faster and looser when I had it off, but I'm still gonna mess with this on for a while because I definitely noticed it was much easier to tackle. You got sucked in much more to tackle ball carriers when this was on and set to 200%, but I don't know if I'm gonna leave this on, so try that out. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. As far as defensive switch assists, I definitely played better with this off. I definitely had more control, got to the ball faster, uh, but if you're not a very good user, the computer will make more plays if you turn this on, so that's really up to you. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and end the video there. If you guys wanna see more videos like this, more tips videos, I'll have them popping up on screen as I've already made a few about defense and offense as well. And that's it, until next time, thanks for watching, man, my shit out. Need more help or just wanna show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like eBooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.